Well, howdy there, folks, and welcome into today's video. Hope you guys are doing great as always out there here today. I just bought another $50,000 plus dollars worth of this particular stock that I think has massive upside ahead, okay? In this video, I'm going to share with you what stock this is, okay? I'm going to share with you exactly why I bought more today. Why not wait till next week? Why not wait till next month? Something like that. Why did I have to buy more of this stock here today? Day. And the third thing is, I'm going to share some earth-shaking news that came out around the stock that no one is looking at, okay? It actually came out in the conference call of this company. It was a little, like, little section, and almost nobody's picking up on this. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this has a massive potential ahead. So, hope you guys enjoy this video. As always, if you don't mind, smash that thumbs up button. We're looking for 50,000 smashes. I bought $50,000 worth of stock. Will be 50,000 smashes down there. I do appreciate it. That helps out our YouTube channel in a massive way. If you're looking to join Stock Hub, it's absolutely free to do so. That is linked in the description. If you're looking to apply to try to get in my private stock group and try to scale your portfolio to six figures, seven figures, and beyond, that is going to be linked in the description as well. Might also have that as the pinned comment down there. Alrighty, guys, let's get into this. So, first off, what stock is this that I put $50,000 plus in here today? Okay. Well, let's meet the chef. Okay. Meet chef. All right. Right? That is the Tattooed Chef Corporation, TTCF, bought another $52,000 worth of stock here today, 2,500 shares at a price of $20.81. That now puts me, okay, in my main private account, I now own 20 thousand shares in that particular account. Those shares are worth $424,000 now in TTCF. So needless to say, this is beginning to get to be like one of my bigger positions I have out there. It's becoming a very important stock for me for the long term, okay? And I'm not done buying it. I'm buying more, okay? Then in the public account, I own another, you know, six figures in that account, okay? Another 106,000 in that account, another 5,000 shares there. And I could definitely buy more of the stock in that account as well. But why more today? And then we'll get into that earth-shaking news that no one is picking up on, okay? Well, here today, the stock's trading at about a $1.7 billion market cap or so. And so there are about five points on why I bought here today, three core points, okay? One is the earth-shaking news last night that I have not even modeled in any of my numbers, okay? There was some big news that came out last night. I didn't model this into any of my numbers, and I'm looking at this, and I'm like, this has a massive potential there. Uh, this this makes me even more bullish than I've ever been on this stock. Okay, so I'm like, before this kind of you know catches around Wall Street and fund managers really get a hold of this and really start to run numbers and figure out how big a potential this is, I'm like, I want to make sure I get a, even a bigger position in this stock before you know things start getting out. Let's just put it that way. Okay, number two, it's still under a two billion dollar market cap. As long as the stock's under two billion dollars, I'm buying. Okay, even under three billion, I think is really attractive as a long-term investor of this company. I'm not thinking about this stock as of, as of like next week, next month, something like that. I'm planning on holding this stock for years and years to go. I think this co company has literally massive growth. I think this is a type of company that's going to be a $5 billion, $10 billion type market cap in the future, if not bigger, okay? And so anything under $2 billion, I'm like, gimme, gimme, gimme. You want to sell shares under $2 billion? I'll be there to buy them, okay? Number three reason, they're already talking about in 2021, gross margins going to the 20 percent to 25 percent range it wasn't that long ago that this business was you know pretty much just last year gross margins were in like 14 percent range so i mean we're talking about this business hasn't even scaled yet okay it's gonna you know the real profits are gonna start pouring in, in my opinion in 2023 and moving forward that's when you'll start to see gross margins of potentially 30 percent or above but the fact that they're already expected to go to 20 percent to 25 percent this year in 2021 is like amazing okay so this business is going to be much more profitable much faster than i even thought for this business okay and that is phenomenal news and i remember i do remember sam galetti the ceo of this company he says i've always been you know running private companies and when you run a private company you got to make money okay you got to make some profit on the bottom line right there's no point in holding a private company and owning your own business if you're not making profit on the bottom line okay a little different than the public markets and so he said like i always come from that discipline and so i always want to make sure, you know, this business is very, very profitable. And then I'm putting these, all these things together. I'm like, this company's growing massively and they're already going to be profitable, already have great gross margins. And this company is so young in terms of the Tattooed Chef brand. I'm like, this is amazing. Okay. 
There's more than that, all right? Yesterday, this news came out, okay? This is not the earth-shaking news, but this was great news. Basically, Tattoo Chef is going to launch six plant-powered products at Target stores nationwide, okay? Nationwide starting March 15th. Six different SKUs. This is huge boat of confidence for Target, okay? Uh, to, to make a move like this for Tattooed Chef, okay? So this just kind of proves that like my belief in this company getting more distribution to more stores, more SKUs is all playing out. You don't get one of the biggest retailers in the world, Target, to say, we're gonna take six SKUs of your product and sell them in our stores nationwide. This is a huge, I mean, I'm not just talking about the numbers, I'm just talking about from a confidence standpoint. Obviously, the numbers, this is going to be super, super exciting, but I'm just talking about from the, the confidence level around this company for Target to say, yeah, bring in six products. You know how hard it is to get your products in Target? Never mind for them, you know, you'd be pretty new to them, and then they're like, yeah, bring in another six products because your past products are selling that well. That's massive, okay? Look at this. So the products are supposed to sell starting at $4.99 per bowl at the Target stores, okay? So TTCF's probably selling those to Target from, for like anywhere between $2.50 and $3.50. We don't know exactly where it is, okay? But I can almost guarantee you uh, the cost of production for TTCF for those bowls is nowhere near $2.50 to $3.50 per bowl. I would estimate the cost for production is somewhere between 75 cents and maybe a dollar and 45 cents, somewhere in there. So needless to say, I think the profitability is gonna be huge, okay? Now you have other, other costs and marketing expenses and things like that that maybe you have to tie in and different things like that, you know, obviously shipping, logistics, product returns. So, you know, it's not as big beautifully, you know, profitable as some might think, but still, like needless to say, there's a lot of profit margin more than likely to be made there. And look at this, okay? So for instance, my local target here, they, they carry two products, two products right now from, from this company essentially, okay? And we're talking about going from two to eight, to eight, okay? I mean, you're talking about your relevancy and your numbers go through the roof when you can go from two SKUs to eight SKUs like that almost almost overnight, right? The only two products at my local Target at the, you know, I'm, I'm at the Arizona house right now. The only two products right now is a organic acai bowl, which I, I know I never say that word, right? I guess it's IC bowl, okay? I call it the acai bowl, okay? And then they have the cold brew and dark chocolate smoothie bowl. That's the only two products you can get at that Target right now. And now they're going to go to eight SKUs. I mean, my gosh, guys, this is massive. And the best part is this isn't even the earth-shaking news we're talking about right now, okay? If you look at Walmart, they're up to four SKUs. And then you look at Sam's Club. That's the one I've seen that's the biggest so far for this company. Seven products now in Sam's Club. Who owns Sam's Club? Walmart, okay? And who competes against Sam's Club? Costco. So look for massive massive more distribution in Costco in the future and Walmart in the future, okay? And these are the products they have at Sam's Club. They have a pizza bowl, a hemp bowl, a plant-based breakfast bowl, and four other products. And keep in mind, you know, that whole thing about all products are subject to availability for real, okay? Because not all Sam's Clubs are, are carrying all seven products yet. And those products sell fast, okay? I'm gonna go later today and basically try to get some of those cauliflower pizza bowls because those things are dang amazing, okay? I love those things, but a lot of times they're out because they, as soon as they hit the shelves, they're gone, okay? But uh, yeah, needless to say, huge potential, right? Now, what if the stock price goes lower in the next 12 months? As some might say, why, why buy another 50K today? What if it goes lower, okay? Well, if it goes lower, meet the buyer, okay? I will gladly buy any TTCF shares across the board that are being sold anytime soon over the next six to 12 months, okay? $15, give me it. $18, give me it. 21, 24, it doesn't matter, okay? What I know about this company is they have massive long-term upside. And when, when I'm talking about stocks like this, I'm not looking to like get a perfect price. Like, would I love to buy a $15 versus 24? Sure, I would, uh, you know. I love a deal. I love a great, great, great deal, okay? But then day 24 is still the deal long term for this company. I, it doesn't really matter. So look at the private account, okay? Meet the private account cost basis. Look at this. I have cost basis 
on these shares of anywhere from like $15 to $24. And so anywhere, I'm buying TTCF pretty much right now, okay? Especially as long as it is under $2 billion market cap. That's where I'm aggressively adding. If it's under $3 billion, okay, maybe I won't add as aggressively. But as long as it's under $2 billion, I will continue to add aggressively this stock. And this is what I do when it comes to investments that I really believe in for the long term. So if we look at the public account, my shares are in the public account of Tesla, look at all the different cost basis. It wasn't like I just bought that stock all in one day and that was it. I bought that stock over a period of time. And I mean, look at the, look at how different the cost basis are for that account, okay? I mean, we're talking anywhere from $37 on a split adjusted basis to $54 on a split adjusted basis for Tesla, okay? You know, that's, you, when you do the percentages, we're talking about massive percentage differences, right? But at the end of the day, I looked at Tesla and I said, this company's highly innovative. They have a super high probability of huge success. The, the risk potential was pretty limited, in my opinion, at Tesla when I was buying at those, you know, particular valuations. So I said, you know, I'm buying the stock, you know, even if it's a 20, 30, 40, 50% difference in price, I will be a buyer. And TTCF, okay, it's more of a fast-moving, high-growth tech stock than it is a traditional, typical food company. Uh, you know, I've heard individuals out there try to just talk about them like, no, oh, it's just a food company. No, okay? This company, they innovate so fast. They're hitting the market so fast. They're expanding distribution so fast. They're moving into new products and SKUs so fast. This is not like a traditional food company, okay, that is slow moving and super bureaucratic and they're lucky to come out with a new product every five years, okay? This company is like on it, okay? Move, move, move fast, okay? That makes this company special. And this is the type of company that always deserves to trade at a pretty big you know, premium because they're always gonna have this massive growth ahead or at least for the foreseeable future, okay? And I remember, you know, obviously I'm an investor of Beyond Meat, okay? And I like Beyond Meat. And I used to think that was the fastest moving food related company. And I can tell you, if I'm comparing TTCF to Beyond Meat, two of my investments, Beyond Meat is slow, slow moving compared to TTCF. And keep in mind, Beyond Meat is moving a million miles per hour if you compare them to almost any other food related company out there except TTCF. This, this company, Tattoo Chef, they're on a whole different level with how fast they're coming out with products, marketing, getting distribution, the SKUs, moving, moving, moving. I've never seen anything like it in the food and drink space. And I've been fortunate enough to own some really good food and drink companies before, but nothing as fast as this, okay? Now, next up, we're gonna get into this earth-shaking news that kind of came out on the DL here, and then I'm gonna give you a little more perspective on this stock overall, okay? So, whenever I've been doing my numbers for TTCF in the past, I've basically been, you know, uh, figuring in that they're going to get more stores and they're going to, you know, in a few years, within the next, you know, two or three years, it's going to be hard to go in any grocery store or store in general and not find this company's products, okay? So, more stores are coming. Obviously, international expansion over time, okay? More SKUs in the store. So, just like we saw with Target going from two SKUs to, you know, now eight SKUs. Sam's Club started with one or two SKUs. Now, it's up to seven. Walmart started with a couple now a lot of these stores are up to four or six for walmart okay so more SKUs coming I, i've you know both most of my numbers i've been doing for this company are only around if like freezer related products keep in mind tattoo chef can go into many other verticals over time outside of just the freezer aisle okay but my numbers i've been doing just off the freezer aisle okay so I've obviously, you know, projected in super strong sell through for these products. I think there's going to be incredible sell through. The products sell as good, if not better than almost anything in the categories they compete in. Okay. Super strong sell through, big margins, big profits incoming for this company, especially in 2023 and past. And those have been my numbers I've been doing. But from time to time, something better than expected happens, okay? Just something better than expected. And look at this, okay? This is a transcript of the conference call last night. And I was listening to this. And when I heard this, I said, what? I, I have zero dollars projected for this, okay? With Rony Rona restrictions expecting to mitigate and students and employees returning to campus and the workplace, we think it is the right time to introduce Tattooed Chef 
to the business, industry, and education channel with our existing Entree and Smoothie Bowl portfolio, distribution network, and new food service broker partner. We are excited about what the future holds for us in food service. My gosh, I have zero dollars, zero dollars in all my revenue and profit projections for this company because I didn't even think they were going to get into food service. And if they did, it wasn't going to be anytime soon. This is what I'm talking about when I talk about a company that is full go pedal to the metal. Okay. You would think though with the crazy amount of growth this company has, they would just get complacent and just be like, well, let's just focus on this. No, they want to expand into other verticals like this. This is incredible. The food service industry, this is massive, guys. So if we look at a company like I own, like Beyond Meat, right? Beyond Meat usually gets around 20% roughly, somewhere around there, right? 15 and 20% of their revenues from the food service category. And then the rest come from retail. So, I mean, we're talking about huge potential for, for Tattooed Chef. So if successful here, we could like add an extra 10% to 20% of revs per year that was never expected before by me. Obviously, I got to see their strategy here before I get too, too excited. I got to see their strategy. I got to, you know, kind of kind of see what's going on there and, and what the rollout is and how successful I think this will be. But there's no doubt in my mind, if this is successful, and if I'm convinced that this is going to be successful, this is an extra 10 to 20% revenue and potentially net income to that bottom line each and every year, okay? And that's not even the best part of this, okay? If these items are branded, you're talking about huge brand exposure for Tattooed Chef, TTCF stock, okay? I mean, you're talking about massive brand exposure. As far as Beyond Meat goes, a stock I own, the best part of all these deals they make with, with different restaurants and, and fast food places and things like that, it's actually not just the, the direct sales they get from that. It's the branding exposure. And this is how Beyond Meat went from a company no one heard about three years ago, unless you were super, super up on like, I don't know, vegan stuff. No one heard of this company three years ago. And now Beyond Meat's a household name. Isn't that incredible? Because of their massive distribution out there to all these different fast food companies and from the food service industry, okay? So this is just crazy stuff that I never have in my projections. And now I'm gonna have to see what their strategy is there this year. And maybe I have to start adding this to my projections. And then we're talking about new valuation projections around TTCF, okay? TTCF is a silly stock to try to time out, in my opinion. Like, oh, let me sell out of it. It might go down short term. and Maybe I'll buy back in six months from now, 12 months from now, 18 months from now. Or maybe I'll buy back in next week. It's a silly stock to try to do that with, in my personal opinion. First off, it's silly to do that with most stocks, but especially phenomenal growth companies that have CEOs in place that are exceptionally well, okay? Sam Galetti running this company. My goodness, he's a straight shooter, and this is a guy that, you know, he's found the golden goose with this company, okay? They're taking this one to the top, him and, him and Sarah Galletti. Let me give you an example of a company I bought many, 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 many years ago, okay? Back when they were called Hanson's Natural Beverage, it was Monster Beverage Corporation, okay? And I bought this stock, and I bought a good position, and it was one of my probably top three biggest positions. And it went up a bunch in the short term, you know, like over the next, I don't know, year or two or whatever, I held the stock, and I sold it. I sold it. And because kind of my thinking was, well, the valuation's a little rich now. So, you know, I, it might go down short term and then I'll buy back in. OK. And what a horrible, horrible decision that was from the time I've sold out of that stock. It's just continued to prosper. It's just continued to be a beast. And even though they got into, you know, competitive situations with other companies and things like that. What's happened to the company? They've just gotten bigger and bigger and more successful over time. The management team there is phenomenal. Their execution is phenomenal. And they just continue to be branding and marketing experts at that company. And, you know, it was a bad decision for me to ever sell at that company. It was horrible. You don't do that with great growth companies that have great management teams in place, okay? And the thing is, as somebody that used to be invested in Monster, which was the best example I could ever find of a, of a phenomenal, like pedal to the metal, uh, food and drink related company, I think TTCF 
might be a level up from monster even. And that's when you say, oh my gosh, holy smokers, this ain't no dang jokers. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you didn't already smash the thumbs up button, I would appreciate it. The whole channel appreciates it, okay? If you wanna apply for my private stock group, learn all the strategies on how I find stocks, how I value stocks, how I run portfolios, be part of our private Discord chat, all those sorts of things. Hope to scale your portfolio to six, seven figures and beyond. That's gonna be linked in the description, but I'll have there's a pinned comment down there. And if you ever do join our private group and you get in there and you own TTCF stock, make sure you join us in, in the category called TTCF product picks at stores. Basically, all the members in there, every time we go to like grocery stores or like Walmart, uh, you know, Costco, not really grocery stores too much because TTCF is actually expanding grocery stores in the back half of this year and in 22. But like Walmart, Target, Sam's Club, Costco, places like that, we always take pictures and post in there and it's great to see kind of like, like how these products are selling, what's distribution looking like across the United States of America. It's pretty sick, okay? Thank you for watching and have a great day.